Are we truly motivated by the things of Christ? A blessed Wednesday to all. This is our reflection for today. Holy Spirit, make my heart open to the Word of God. Make my heart open to goodness. Make my heart open to the beauty of God. St. Thomas More was one of the most highly respected men of his time. He was a successful barrister and judge rising to the highest status of any commoner in England. Appointed by Henry VIII to the office of Lord Chancellor, he was also a man of deep and demanding faith. In his youth, he had considered a monastic vocation, but instead he was called to serve God in the secular world. While outwardly enjoying a life of comfort in the privacy of his spiritual life, he wore a hair shirt, attended daily mass, and practiced a strict discipline of prayer. He is also believed to have become a third order Franciscan. More considered himself a loyal friend and servant of the king, but for some years, Henry had been moving toward a fateful collision with the Catholic Church in his desire to annul his marriage to Catherine of Aragon to Mary Anne Boleyn. When the Pope blocked his way, Henry divorced Catherine, married Anne, and required that all subjects repudiate any foreign authority, prince, or potentate. Rather than oppose the king, Moore resigned his position. But when he refused to take the oath, he was arrested and imprisoned in the Tower of London. He was put on trial, convicted of treason, and was executed. Thomas More was later canonized in 1935. In the year 2000, he was declared the heavenly patron of statesmen and politicians. The circumstances of St. Thomas More's life clearly state the purity of his motivation which is absolute obedience to the will of Christ. In today's reading, in John chapter 5, verse 17 to 30, Jesus claims that His every action is justified because it is motivated by the will of God. He declares to the Jews challenging Him that He is carrying out the will of His Father, which is the plan of God for man's redemption. The motivation of Jesus is the same as the Father, to bring new life. To challenge him and question his motivation is to challenge the very heart of Yahweh, whom the Jews claim to serve. Yet to be able to act out the plan of the Father requires something of Jesus, and that is equality with the Father. Jesus said to them, Amen, Amen, I say to you, the Son cannot do anything on his own, but only what he sees the Father doing. For what He does, the Son will do also. For the Father loves the Son and shows Himself everything that He Himself does. And He will show Him greater works than this, so that you may be amazed. This is the problem for the Jewish establishment. For them, new life came from the law and their adherence to it. On the other hand, Jesus arrives claiming that He is the fulfillment of the law and the path to new life, and to receive it, He must become our motivation. The Son does as the Father, thus the true disciple must do as the Son does. Jesus' conviction came from within and without. His Father, the One in Heaven, surrounded Him like the air He breathed. His Father's will, seen in sending Him for the salvation of the world, was the priority of His life. It is in that same way that St. Thomas More had the conviction that empowered him to challenge the might of an earthly king so that he may obey the holy will of a divine one. May we be able to enter into our prayers the willingness and the hope to do and fulfill the will of God for His people. 
May our prayers dwell even more on Jesus' own. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May our time in prayer, whether silent or verbal, be our wish that His will be done, and the love of His reign be made visible on earth. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father in heaven, through your Son, we became aware of your great love for us and how you made us the object of your will. Purify our motivations, strengthen our hearts, and fill us with your grace so that all that we do, think, and say will be in accordance to your holy will. This we ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families. God bless couples for Christ and our Catholic faith.